Welcome to Voices from the Bench, a dental laboratory podcast. Send us an email at info at voicesfromthebench.com or look for us on Facebook at Voices from the Bench. Greetings and welcome to Voices from the Bench. We are at episode 119. My name is Elvis. My name is Barbara. Happy 4th of July weekend. And Elvis. Absolutely. So we're recording this on Friday the 3rd, so the 4th hasn't happened, but this is going to come out yeah. while we've all got done celebrating a great day of getting together in large crowds and spending time with everybody, and actually we're not doing anything. Nope. There's no fireworks here. Everything's canceled. I was going to ask you that. No bars are open now. They closed that back up. Florida seems to be the, quote, new epicenter, so. Way to go, Barb. What'd you do? <laughs> <laughs> uh, i'm wearing my mask just saying never thought i would say that but i am yeah we're to the point where you just have to there's no ifs ands or buts about yep. it let's get over this people i want to be able to travel again i want to be able to do things again i do too we've missed out on a lot yes now here we go again so you know what's awesome though how fast our businesses came back and how busy everybody is i'm really psyched about that but i'll be honest with you i'm super glad i have the day off a three-day weekend just to relax and lay out in the sun, Florida sun, 95 degrees, go for a couple runs. I love it. Yeah, I'm a little shocked that the dentist around here, a lot of them took the whole week off. And I was like, what are you doing? Don't you need business? Wow. Don't you exactly. don't you need patience? I, I was a little shocked. But you know what? Do what you got to do. Business is yep. still steadily up for us, so things are good. Yep, same here. Yeah, happy 4th of July to everybody. Let's get back to work. Let's get this summer going. So let's get rolling. So usually when we think of outsourcing, we think of sending work overseas. It's kind of like that word means sending work overseas. But a lot of labs use other labs or milling centers to help them with either production or workflow or even to help when your mill in your lab decides to take the week off unexpectedly. And we all know what that's like. Yeah. Outsourcing does not always mean sending to another country. There's a lot of labs here. And we outsource to some other labs to get work done that we can't do in our lab. So while Barb was busy doing the 300% more work than she usually does during (laughs) COVID, I had the chance to talk to two brothers that after working in their dad's lab started their own 100% American-made and designed milling center that most of us has probably heard of called Alien Milling Technologies. Mm-hmm. Saro and Rafi Hofsta Korsian. Hold on. There you go. Hatsa Korsian. You should just let him say it for you. Hatsa <laughs> Hatsa Korvian, which I'm sure I'm pronouncing in a very American okay. accent. Yeah, I'll take it. <laughs> well, they came on the podcast to talk about their company. And because Friday is super busy for them, I mostly talk with Sorrow, but you can hear Rafi chime in in the background every now and again. He's probably back there changing pucks or whatever mm-hmm. they do. So Saro talks about all the services and products they offer. What's it like to run a one-day turnaround milling center Oof. and why it's important yeah no kidding and why it's important to be a true partner and extension to help labs be successful. So join us for an out of this world conversation with Saro and Rafi from Alien Milling. Whitmix is super excited to announce the new Pro 4K large format 3D printer from Asiga. The open material printer for 385NM and 405NM resins features renowned Asiga reliability and super fast print mode for large batch printing of virtually all print resins. It's ideal for printing any kind of model, dentures, splints, surgical guides, impression trays, and more. As with other Asiga printers, the Pro 4K features the SPS, Smart Positioning System Technology, which ensures that the build platform is in the correct position when forming each layer, providing repeatable accuracy and production continuity. The Asiga Pro 4K DL printer is priced at under 25 grand has a large build plate and is available in both versions. 
For more information about the Asiga Pro 4K, visit Whitmix.com. We appreciate your support of the podcast, Whitmix. Voices from the Bench. The Interview. All right, we are pleased to have on the podcast today the two gentlemen that own a milling center out in California. We don't really have a milling center perspective on this podcast before, but we're happy to be joined by the two guys that started Alien Milling. So we have Saro and Rafi Hatasargian. I've already messed it up. (laughs) No problem. Thank you for having us. So is this Rafi or is this Saro? I'm sorry. This is Saro. Saro, how are you today, sir? I'm doing just well. Thank you so much. Nice. So you guys own Alien Milling, which is like a huge milling company. When did it start? What year? So I developed the website in 2015, and uh, 2016 of January was our actual like official launch. So really, we're talking just four years old. Yes. That's insane how big you guys are. I mean, I see it everywhere. I see it listed everywhere. Everybody mentions you guys. You guys have tons of marketing. It's amazing how big you've become in four years. We've been in this lab business for years, like me and my brother. But when we decided to open up Alien Milling, it really gave us the opportunity to give back to the lab community and offer really good prices and an easy way of ordering for everyone. You know, this was something that we didn't have in our industry before. And I just wanted to introduce that and give people the option to order at any time, give them a really nice tool for their lab, be an extension of their lab. Sure. So let's go back to the beginning. I mean, obviously you guys aren't new to the lab business. You didn't just walk in and open up a milling center. How'd you guys get introduced to this? So me and my brother, we actually worked at my dad's lab before my dad has owned the lab. He's owned the lab his whole life. Really? Growing up, I don't know if you've had lab parents, but you pretty much grow up in a lab. Yeah. You know, you start from model work and then you work your way up to wax and metal and then eventually become a porcelain ceramist. Were you the famous cheap child labor to your parents? Or? <laughs> <laughs> You know, uh, so yeah, me and Rafi joke all the time. It's like we didn't get paid, you know, for the first couple of years of working. And, and of course, it was just a family business. I mean, we just want to make ends meet just like everybody else. What kind of lab was it? It was a Crown and Bridge lab. Okay. There in California? Yes. Still there? Still there. Yep. Wow. What did you do? You became a ceramist? So yeah, I started with model department. Then I worked my way up to uh, wax and metal finishing. From there, did a porcelain and staining glaze work. And it wasn't until like 2007 when we first bought our first scanner. And that was like our introduction to digital dentistry, to digital CAD CAM. Yeah. What scanner did you guys start with? It was actually a Nobel BioCare Forte machine. Oh, the Forte, that little red dot. Yeah. The touch off, you know, it touches off uh, the die and it scans it with a touch point. Sure. Yeah. We had one of those here too. I was fascinated by that machine. (laughs) You still have it. We actually still have that in our meeting room, and we just keep that as a reminder of how this whole thing started. That's great. (laughs) Because I imagine you have quite a bit of scanners these days. Uh, Mostly three-shape. It's just a seamless workflow for us. Nice. At what point did you transition from working for your dad to opening up a milling center? Did you even think about opening your own lab, or was your thoughts just to be that extension to labs. So my thoughts initially were strictly digital, right? I didn't want to deal with impressions or model work or nothing like that. I just wanted a strictly digital where customers can upload their SDL files. We'll take it. We'll mill it out. When we started the company, I mean, it was just crowns and copings. Today, we've expanded that line to everything in the market. So we can do titanium bars, full arch hybrids, custom abutments, you name it. I mean, there's nothing in the dental field that we don't mill. Or print, because now printing is getting pretty big, too. Sure, absolutely. So when you first opened Alien Milling, did you offer all those services, or did you start with just, like, copings or crowns? It was simply, yeah, copings and crowns. And we even offered wax crowns. We used to mill wax uh, crowns. Oh, yeah. I remember those days. Yeah, You know, a couple of customers started saying, you know, hey, the crowns, I mean, the wax is coming in broken or it's coming melted. So we just took that off the site, like, 
after a couple of months, it was just a bad idea. Oh, so you'd ship them out, and as it traveled through UPS or whatever, the thing would melt? It would melt or it'd break, you know, whatever. To yeah. keep. I mean, we put them in foam packagings, but still, even then, it, it gets crushed. Oh, sure. It's UPS. I mean, come on. <laughs> <laughs> So I know you guys carry your own brand of Zirconia. Did you start with your own brand or were you using another brand when you first opened? No. So when we first started, obviously, you know, we started this company from like from the ground up, right? So we didn't have all this money to invest in and open up a huge million per se. But we started with a different brand of Zirconia. And when we started seeing, okay, you know, we're catching on traction Maybe it is time to develop our own unique blend of zirconia. So we talked with one of the largest manufacturers in the world, and we started developing our own unique blend of zirconia with our unique shades, which we think are spot on. And the idea of selling the zirconia didn't come to us until 2017, a year after we started, because people were transitioning off and they were buying their own milling machines, but their doctors were used to our zirconia. So they didn't Mm. want to change a thing. So then they started asking us if they can buy our zirconia. So our first couple of batches were sold without any beautiful boxes or, you know, beautiful packaging. It was just, sold, you know, just like how we were using them. Everything came in a brown paper sack. (laughs) (laughs) Pretty much. Yeah. (laughs) What do you need? A1, A2, you know, we'll ship it out. Blank discs. That's hilarious. It's interesting that you first made it for yourselves before you sold it to market, but it makes sense if people were using you as a milling center and they also milled in their lab, they would need something that would be able to blend together. It would transition perfectly. You know, you could use us until you decide to buy your own first mill. And once you did buy your first mill, you just continue on with the same zirconia. Nothing changes in your lab. Your technicians are still seeing the same crowns. Your doctors are still seeing the same crowns. It was an easy move. Sure. What is your largest user of your services? Is it labs here in the States? Definitely labs. I mean, our site is dedicated to labs. 95% maybe is labs. Really? Wow. You do everything there in California, right? Nothing gets outsourced of the country. Impossible. I mean, everything we offer is a one-day turnaround. That's not to say like if you got a crown that requires, let's say, staining glaze, it's going to be done in one day. But if you send a file to us, it's one day to mill and then one day to staining glaze. So basically every single thing we do is one-day turnaround. Wow. So it doesn't matter if it's a simple molar zirconia crown or a six-unit titanium bar? Yep. Sometimes, I mean, I've seen titanium bars even leave our lab the same day they come in, you know, because there is no sintering process. Sure. So it comes in, you know, the mill usually takes about two hours, and then it might even make it to the FedEx cutoff time after QC passes it. Wow. That's insane. It shocks me too because uh, I'm like, wait, this order just came in today. But if you go on our site and you look on the reviews for the implant titanium bar for the Alien brand, Mm -hmm. you're going to read some reviews and people are saying, you know, how crazy fast the turnaround is. Yeah. And that's good that you go ahead and ship them out early because even in a lab, if we get done with the crown early, we don't always send it to the doctor because we don't want them to get used to it. You know? Because you can't always do it that quick. But. Exactly. But we know how like rush everything is for the labs. You know, I mean, ev- everything is pretty much due yesterday. Absolutely. And that's the biggest part as a lab when we look to outsource. When we send things out, we look for made in America. We look for price, but we look for turnaround time because it's got to fall within our turnaround time. And I know Alien knocks all of those out of the park for sure. That's cool. What's the majority of your market? Is it people that use you all the time or are you more of like an overflow or when their machines are down or is it a mix of all of that? So it's a combination of all. We do check our return rate. We do have a great return rate with customers returning back and placing another order and continuing. We see a lot of customers that place daily orders. So those customers, I know for sure they use us strictly because they don't want to mill anything. But we do have those customers that we see once every three months that will come back and place another order. And, you know, we don't necessarily have to call everyone, but you can get a good estimate that it's probably because their machine is down or they are overflowed. Yeah. I mean, that's what we use it for. And I'm sure a lot of labs do. It's a great backup service. I mean, if I owned a lab, I I would love to work with a company like Alien. 
Yeah. Well, there's days where I wish I didn't have any machines in this place. It My life would be a lot easier. <laughs> <laughs> do you guys provide design services? Yes, we do. Really? So what does that look like? Is that a one day turnaround? Or? Yep. So you upload it. You know, our cutoff time is 1 p.m. or no, 12 o'clock now because of the COVID-19 situation. Uh-huh. But we are going to go back to normal pretty soon, probably in the next week. And our normal cutoff time would be back to 2 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Anything you upload before 2 p.m. will get designed. The next day, you will have it back. Wow. And you'll send the design back or you'll actually mill it there? Yeah. So it's either or. We offer design-only service or we offer design and milling service. That's cool. And is it all designed there in California? Yes. That's cool. I did not realize that. A little bit pricier than other competitors out there, but it's because, I mean, we are designing them here. Yeah. And I think a lot of it is worth it because I hear bad things about the ones that come from other places not being consistent. True. How many designers do you guys have? At the moment, we have six designers. Wow, that's still a good amount. Which is great because they do a lot of the QC work for us too afterwards. So they get to see their mm-hmm. creations, you know, not just on the screen, but they actually see it in physical life come to life in about a day or so. That actually makes a lot of sense. You don't realize how little design centers actually get to see the work. Probably never. Yeah, probably never. That's interesting. Very cool. So what all do you guys offer? I know zirconia, metal copings. We do. We offer chromium cobalt copings from Bago. So it's a really good metal. Mm -hmm. And we offer titanium copings too from Bago as well. Interesting. But none of the precious alloys or anything. So no, no gold at all. No. Okay. There's other companies that do that and they do a great job at it. So let them have it. Sure. Obviously zirconia. And then we mentioned implant bars and abutments. Do you have them for every system? So we have about 15 systems right now. And we're, I don't want to say we're exclusively milling NT trading, but we we are. We don't really work with any other implant manufacturer, I guess. Mm -hmm. So NT trading has done a great job in providing all of the pre-mills that we need, the analogs, and we actually resell their parts as well. So if a lab is looking to buy analogs or scan bodies, we sell those on our site too. But we also do mill everything from NT Trading. So we don't have to worry about the FDA 510K clearance for the abutments. Because it's already done through NT Trading. Yes. We pay the premium price to get that safety. Yeah. So if a lab wanted to send you for abutments, they would have to have a scan body from NT Trading, right? That is correct. And the NT Trading library that can be downloaded off their site. Yeah, and I think that's a free upgrade to three shape. Yes. Yeah, excellent. And then what else do you guys do? Do you do uh, the hybrids? So we do full arch hybrids. We offer uh, zirconia. Right now, the full arch hybrid is only in the HT material, which is 1200 MPA. It's very strong. Mm-hmm. We will be introducing it in our multi layer zirconia because we're starting to produce a 25 millimeter puck for the multi layer. We're waiting for a clearance on our the new extreme that we have right now we validated it for up to seven units once we get approval from the fda for a 14 unit hybrid then we will validate that product for a full arch hybrid as well wow and we'll be developing that in a 25 millimeter disc as well wow what's it like to submit something like that to the fda you hear about people do it and how hard and expensive it is um, there's clinical trials, so you just have to wait to see if that material actually holds up and it doesn't break through that clinical phase. You actually produce it and put it out into the public. Yes. Do you work with certain labs to do that? or uh, No, certain doctors. Oh. Do you guys deal direct with doctors? Well, to, for the clinical phases, we have to. Yes. A big thing that everyone talks about is your free crown Friday. That's uh, that's actually a funny story. We started that as, you know, oh, let's try it out. Let's see what happens. And, we, you know, we did it once or twice. And I think the third Friday, when we first started in like 2016 with this uh, promo, uh-huh. we didn't do it, right? We're like, oh, let's just not do it this Friday. Elvis, I swear, so many phone calls came in that day and they said, hey, I didn't get the code. Is your email working? And we're like, hey, <laughs> we didn't do it this Friday. And they're like, why not? So then we decided to send a late email out saying, OK, excuse us. Here's the free Crown Friday code. It just became a huge hit. I mean, people love it. We love it because we give back to the community and people say, you know, like, 
get a free crown. Like, how can you guys do this to new and existing customers? And we're like, this is our thanks to everyone for supporting us. How many people wait to submit till Friday? <laughs> you know, we have seen a couple of accounts where they only submit orders on Friday and it's for that free crown. And they don't pay for, let's say, staining glaze and they don't pay for shipping because they're local. So they absolutely yeah. get it for free. I mean, they it's a $0 order. They come and they pick up that case and it's completely free every single Friday. <laughs> And they don't send you anything else. Well, I mean, I'm not going to say that, but as there are some accounts that just do that and I'm completely fine with it. You know, as long as they remember us and they say, you know, oh, let me go to Alien Milling on Friday and uh, let me go say hi to the guys. You know, they're more than welcome to come. That's great. It, it, it's an interesting that you're able to sustain that and offer that service because I can only imagine how many you do a week. Uh, it's, it's quite a few. I don't know the latest count. Yeah. But because of this whole slowdown too, it kind of, you know, messed up all the numbers. I can only imagine with everything else slowing down, you guys must have come to a almost a stop. It's been a pretty sad couple of months for sure. Starting from like March 15. Yeah. Uh, when we saw everybody else slow down, we were still doing okay. But right around March, you know, 25, like 10 days after the big shutdown, California really took it hard as well. They completely closed all the dental offices, I'm sure nationwide. Mm. A lot of the labs were affected and we just saw our numbers drop. Were you able to operate still at all or did California shut you down completely? No. So technically we were considered a essential business because we are uh -huh. providing essential services to the dentists that are performing the essential work. So we were able to open. Unfortunately, we did have to put a temporary pause on our workforce and did have mm -hmm. to send some people home. But, you know, we did call everyone back. It's not like people were laid off permanently. Good. And are you seeing quite an increase in work now? We are seeing it pick up. I'm very happy, very excited. It's, it's crazy because it happened at a time when we just moved to a new facility, you know? Oh. <laughs> yeah. As, I mean, people say, oh, well, when are you going to make the move? Because we got the building in January mm -hmm. and we started retrofitting the place to our needs, right? The power, the air, the AC, the, you know, the vacuums, you name it. We, you know, yeah. all the electrical work. It started happening. And then right around March 15 is when we finally finished the renovation, including, you know, the tables, the floors, the paint, everything was done. And then the business slowed down. So me and my brother, we kind of thought and we're like, this is a good time to move because the work kind of slowed down. So it was kind of a blessing in disguise for us. I don't want to say that. I know it sucks to say that. I get it. But you know what I mean? You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. It gave us an opportunity to move. It's not like we opened up a new facility and we started operating and then we can close down. The, no, it, it was had to be a transition and we got to do it without losing a single case, which was, uh, well, I was very proud of that. Yeah. How many mills do you guys have? I lose count, Elvis. I, I Really? Um, because some mills, you know, we take them off production line. They got to be, you know, repaired or whatnot. Last time I did a count, I think we were at 32 or 35. Don't quote me on it. Wow. And that's, that's operational. Lot, yeah. I'm not saying all the other yeah. ones that are sitting waiting to be put back in production. We have so many reserves too. I would imagine you would need a lot of backup. Yeah. So how is it logistically? Things come in digitally. I Or do you guys accept a lot of models or does most of it come in digitally? So when I officially started the business, I did not want to accept models. But then we thought... Yeah. Yeah, we saw that it was a big portion of the work because not a lot of labs had scanners yet. Mm -hmm. So they send in their model work. We still scan them. We have three shape scanners mm -hmm. and then we design them and then we'll mill them out the next day and then they'll be out of here the third day. And is that still happening? A lot of models coming in or is it mostly digital now? No, no. We, we got a good bunch of orders coming in. I would say I'm, I'm going to take a rough estimate and say probably 80% is digital and 20% is models. Oh, I'm still surprised at that number. You know, I guess there's still a lot of people out there without the scanners. Yep. And uh, I'm seeing a new increase in work where labs are scanning their models and they're just sending it to us for us to design it and mill it. So I'm seeing an influx in that. So uh, a lot of people are starting to buy more and more scanners, but they're just not comfortable designing or maybe they don't have the design software yet. Sure. Or the personnel to design. That's, yep. that's really the hardest part. Exactly. Yeah. So when stuff comes in, how soon is it before it comes in, before it's actually in a mill? As far as model work goes? As far as any of it goes. I mean, model work, you're printing, right? Um, no. The, so the model work comes in from the labs. We just take it and we scan it. Okay. I see what you're saying. Yeah. And that would be, let's say one day of work. And then the milling would be the second day of work. And then the shipment and QC would be the third day. Mm-hmm. 
when you send us an SDL file before our cutoff time, 2 p.m., yep. we'll take that case and we'll route it to the milling center right away. That case is pretty much in the mill within 10 minutes of you placing that order online. 10 minutes. Wow. Gets milled out. Each unit is about, I would say, 12 minutes mill time. Gets milled out, and then it's ready to go in the centering oven that same night. So I have 10 minutes to call you to say I told you the wrong shade? <laughs> You're too late. Yeah. <laughs> you know how many calls we get like that? And we're like, sorry, that case is already in the oven. But because we're laid back people just like you, just like every other lab out there, if you told us the wrong shade, well, guess what? I mean, we're the king of free Crown Fridays. You think we're not going to redo that for you for free? That's pretty generous. <laughs> right. I mean, that doesn't happen often. But if you call me every day, I'm going to probably advise you to get some new prescription glasses. Yeah. <laughs> it's not me. It's the office. <laughs> oh. <laughs> they called and changed the shade after I picked it up. So. It happens. Yep. We're all human. Yeah. Look at your website. You guys do a lot of night guards, it looks like, and um, wow, lava. Yep. Emaxes. You guys do a lot of Emaxes. I imagine you do a ton of Emaxes. You know, um, we saw an increase in the work of Emax lately for the past year or so. We used to grind the Emax on the 350i, which is a really nice workhorse machine. However, it's just not meant for, I guess, Emax because we blew out the spindle twice. Because that Emax uh -oh. material is really, really rough. I mean, on the spindle itself, it, it heats it up and uh, it becomes very fine particles and it gets all over the spindle and it causes air to not get in there to cool it down properly. So it blows that spindle really fast. So finally, this year, we decided to go with the new Ivoclar PM7. Oh, yeah. Which is, you know, we've been hearing nothing but great things about it. So. I think Ivoclar is scheduled to come out pretty soon to come and set it up for us, and we can get that machine rocking strictly solely for Emacs. Yeah. The biggest problem with doing Emacs is for labs is just having a wet mill. And once you introduce that water, it's just so much more issues happen. And you can really kill the life of your spindle pretty quickly using this material if it's not sealed properly. You know, and a lot of mills out there, they're not sealed properly. So, you really have to be careful because Spindle could put you back, you know, $5,000 easily. Oh, easy. Put that into the cost of actually grinding out the Emacs and that becomes one, you know, expensive crown. You guys were a big supporter of Lab Day Chicago. I mean, you guys were like premium sponsor. Thank you. Why was that important to you guys to be that big in Chicago? Number one, which I can probably summarize this in one statement is... Our industry is so small. It's so tight knit, right? It's such a small knit community. Anyone that does something this big to support our community, you have to go right back and support them just as big, mm -hmm. right? Because if it wasn't for Lab Day Chicago, maybe all of us, we wouldn't be as close. Their events really do bring all of us together and it becomes a big party for everyone because we get to see each other, you know, three times a year and really appreciate the industry that we're in. And we know everyone. I mean, it's amazing. I, I love this community. Absolutely. Lab Day Chicago is such an important event. I personally want to thank you guys for sponsoring it because I know a lot of that happens because of the sponsors. It's funny you mentioned Chicago again because remember the booth uh, with the arcade? Did you play that game? Yes. Yes. <laughs> what was your score? I can't remember. Horrible. I remember the best score was about 60,000 until this one gentleman came in and he put 210,000 on the scoreboard. Is that the guy that won the laptop? Yes. And nobody beat him for the next day and a half. He must have practiced somewhere. <laughs> I think Rafi told me it was his first time playing that game ever. What? I know. I know. Where was he from? Do you know? Do you remember? Uh, Icon Dental Lab. Icon? Yeah. Hmm. I think so. Uh, I don't want to just throw out a name out there, but I remember seeing that. I mean, I talked to the guy for like a good 30 minutes after he won. Yeah, that's cool. I remember you guys doing that. I thought that was really neat. A lot of people mentioned that video game. Even when we talked to Judy Fishman at Lab Day, on the interview we had of her, she mentioned your guys wow. as the video game. Those kind of things stand out. They make a difference in a good show and an okay show. And the prize was excellent, in my opinion, too. I mean, it was an Alienware laptop, so... It's the best of the best, you know. You can it is. You can run your Exocat on there, your Three Shape, and your milling software. You know, you can do everything on there. Yeah, I was hoping to run my podcast software on there, but I didn't win. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> so something I actually meant to ask earlier: Why did you name it Alien Milling? What's the story behind that? 
You know, um, when we first started, we started using a software that was kind of alien to the whole um, dental world. For example, like a mesh mixer and blender, which is now, you know, everybody knows these stuff. But these, yeah. these weren't normal like dental software to design crowns or to modify stuff. Because sometimes, you know, back then in 2011 or, or 2015, actually, the softwares did have their limitations, especially dental softwares. But you had other software like SolidWorks and RhinoCAD, and you could actually do anything with those. So we started using different softwares. It was alien to the world. Plus, you know, who doesn't have a fascination with aliens? I mean, everybody loves aliens, right? Absolutely. I'm a big believer that aliens do exist. Yes. I think a lot of them are in our industry already. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> so what's this I hear about you guys coming out with a 3D printed crown? Did you see the news yesterday? Did you get the email? I did. I don't know if you guys are ready to talk about this on a podcast. I will say that this will definitely come out after the webinar. So if you want to let us in on some of this cool stuff you got going on. Definitely. I know most of it is a, a secret. We are Just to be clear, we are not developing this material. We're not, we're not doing anything. All we're doing is testing it. Okay. And we're also going to be able to um, resell it. The company developing it is Bago USA or Bago in Germany. Same thing. Yeah. And they're coming out with this awesome new material for 3D printing where right now it's approved as a class two for a temporary crown. Mm -hmm. But I guess they're going to be to petition this as a permanent crown. So what's going to happen is you're going to have this permanent crown printed. We don't have a timeline yet for the permanent uh, restoration. However, uh, sure. the temporary crown is going to be launched officially July 1st worldwide. And of course, with Alien Milling as well, we're, we're going to cooperate with them and we'll be launching it on July 1st as well. The printer itself and the materials. As far as the permanent goes, we'll see how that's going to pan out. As of right now, they're probably estimating, you know, fourth quarter of this year. Yeah, that's exciting, though. So temporaries first. What's the printer you got to print them on? Um, so right now they have it for the Bago printer, which is the Varseo printer. It's the Varseo XS. Uh -huh. And they also validated it to work on the Asiga printer, so which is great news. Oh, yeah. Um, a lot of people have those printers already. They're also working on validating other printers. I can't say which ones right now, but they are you know, working on validating more printers for sure. Is it different resins for different shades? Yes. So right now, don't quote me on it, but I think they have A2, A3, and C2 uh, ready to go. I'm sure they're working on A1 and B1 as well. Yeah, but those first three are like 70% of what we all do. Yep, so. especially when it comes to temps, you know? No one's going to do yeah. a BL1 temporary, right? They're going to match. <laughs> yeah. yeah. If you're only going to print one crown, I mean, hopefully you're printing more, you'd have to fill that tray with that resin, print that one crown. And then change the tray, I guess. So it huh. you can buy you know several like three different trays or let's say one tray for each shade. And every time yeah. you print one, you just take that tray out and you pop in a new one. It's like a cassette for a video player, you know, whatever. You just pop it in yeah. and then you can start your print for the C2, let's say. It's really – it's convenient. It's easy. It's small. Um, it's very, very easy, by the way. And I think the game is going to start changing pretty soon, maybe in the next couple of years, maybe in the three years where – you know, printing is going to offer so much more. It's just the right way to do manufacturing, I think. I'm a really big fan of additive manufacturing. Yeah. There's a lot less waste. Yeah. What are you going to do with all those 30-some-odd mills that you have, though? You know, um, zirconia is a great <laughs> material. And as new zirconia comes out, maybe in the next year or so, when we start seeing Y6 zirconia come out, milling will still be here, even yeah. in 10 years. Because unless they start printing zirconia, which, you know, there's word about that, but... I don't think we have to worry about that yet. Milling is definitely going to be something that's going to be incorporated. It's not like uh, printing has to replace it. It can complement it. Sure. So what is this temporary crown? What are you guys going to call it? It's going to be strictly Bagel's uh, material. So we're going to call it the Bagel PMMA crown. Okay. And that launch is July 1st. July 1st. So we are going to be reselling the printing service of the PMMA crown. So you can send us an SDL and we can print it for you. Or you can buy the printer from us and the resins and our bundle price is going to be ten thousand dollars for that really and obviously with that printer you can do more than just the temporary crowns obviously yes of course yeah they're going to be developing so many materials i mean bago is a world famous company dental company you know it's not like an mm -hmm. company oh sure that just got into dental no i mean they were born and you know raised in dental for a, a long time ago and when they launch this, you know they're going to be working on some amazing materials for our industry. I don't know 
I can't say too much, but they're going to come out with some amazing solutions for a lot of the stuff that we do. Yeah. No, I've heard some good things about that company, about what they're working on, and it's pretty exciting. And it's awesome that you've got to partner up with them for this temporary. I'm very excited. I think they came out swinging. I know they were a little bit quiet for the last couple of years, but I'd say these last three years, uh, Bago has definitely been making a huge name for themselves. And I'm so happy to be a part of that. Yeah, that's going to be cool. I'm probably going to send you one just to check it out. (laughs) Let's go. Yeah, we honestly, I don't do a lot of temporary crowns here, but we do a few. Are they going to be able to do them on implants? You could do them on implants. I mean, I know you don't do too many temporary, but what about wax-ups? I'm sure your doctors would love to see some nice wax-ups, right? Yeah, I'm tired of hand-waxing wax-ups, yeah. You can start printing them. Same material? Same material, and you got much better printing capabilities when it comes to undercuts because the mills sometimes don't get it, but the printing is going to get it every single time. Sure, I'm liking that. I'm liking that a lot. <laughs> How thin can it be? Or do you know? I don't know the parameters yet, but I'm, yeah, I'm okay. going to take a wild guess and say half a millimeter minimum. That's pretty thin. Yep. So what's staling milling other than this great temporary crown? What else are you guys working on? Uh, we have some exciting news, actually. Just not too long ago, we signed a another partnership agreement with VHF to officially distribute their machines under the Alien Milling OEM brand name. Oh, really? We'll be launching three mills to begin with, and this is in conjunction with VHF, but it's going to be private labeled under Alien Milling brand, and a couple Mm -hmm. of little tweaks that we wanted to make to some of the machines and some of the software to fit our liking, you know, because we use a lot of VHF mills over here. That's 90% of what we got. We're really, really happy with the brand, and we couldn't think of a better partner to go with to resell their machines. I mean, even when it comes to support, I think there's nobody in America that can support the machines better than we can. So what kind of tweaks are you going to do? Or are you not allowed to say? (laughs) Some of the software tweaks we want to implement, we're currently working with their development team just to make sure that we can get them underway. I can't really say too much, but it is ultimately going to benefit the end client when it comes as far as shaving off a couple of seconds or minutes off of their mill time Mm -hmm. and giving them a better restoration that fits properly every single time. Nice. Are they going to be dry, wet, combination, both? There's going to be three machines. The first two will be strictly dry. And then the third one is going to be a dry and wet mill. It's the R5. It's their best machine. It's their class A top of this Flagstaff mill. It's got a built-in ionizer where you can mill dry. You can Then you can mill wet and it will clean itself out and then it will go back to dry. It holds 10 discs. Ten, wow. And it's nonstop operation. So you can go from wet to dry, even if you're not at the lab. I mean, you can set this thing up over the weekend, go home, come back, and you don't have to worry about the machine going from wet to dry to wet to, you know, back and forth. Oh, really? It cleans itself out. It's just an unbelievable machine. That's pretty cool. That sounds cheap. (laughs) (laughs) It's actually not a bad price compared to some of the other machines that size that do that i mean it's for a machine like this that can hold 10 discs and it's under a hundred thousand i think it's not bad it's right at seventy thousand. it's actually pretty good that's not bad for 10 discs that's not bad i've seen ones that had four that were close to that yeah. <laughs> you can put 60 blocks of emacs or 60 abutments in there you know i mean the mill is just a workhorse machine nice and that'll be exclusively through you guys um no well the alien milling brand will but of course you know there's other suppliers out in the u.s that branded under their name yep yeah but not tweaked by the guys that use them all day long yeah and figured out exactly what needs to be done exactly it makes sense you know buy it from someone that uses it we've had a long relationship with vhf but of course i mean when it came to service we did have to go through the people that we bought it from sure but we did have a long time relationship with the ceo of vhf and you know some other team members and we finally you know asked uh, if we can distribute it but of course with a little bit of tweaks that we wanted to make and uh, we finally came to an agreement and we decided to pull the trigger on it and let's go for it that's cool when does that start happening so again that's going to be in july so july is going to be an extremely busy month for us wow no kidding huge launches yeah what else you guys got going on we are increasing some of the shades on the multi-layer zirconia Okay. The sizes on the multi-layer, the Stardust and the Extreme. Mm-hmm. Uh, and we are introducing new shades for the Extreme and the uh, Stardust as well. So we're just increasing our product portfolio. So you can do 
almost any shade in almost any material that we offer. So how did you guys come up with your names for your zirconia? We did some ads for you, and I remember having to say Stardust, and uh, <laughs> which, of course, caters to my inner David Bowie. HT and multilayer is pretty straightforward, right? Yeah, yeah. And extreme was pretty straightforward, too, because it is a really extreme zirconia. I mean, uh, 49% with 1,000 MPA. Stardust, however, it was a unique combination and it, it blew me away and i really fell in love with the material as well i really like that material mm -hmm. don't ask me how i came up with stardust i just thought of the end product after you finish milling it and all this dust that's on the bed of the yeah. machine and i said you know this this is a unique blend because it's, it's a progressive translucent zirconia so it's more translucent more on the incisal and less translucent on the cervical which blends amazing in the, in the mouth. And after looking at the end product, I said, you know, this is not a regular zirconia. This is from the stars. You know, this is stardust right here. And that's how I came up with the name for that one. I think it's great. I think it's a great name for a zirconia. For a zirconia, right? It works well. It stands out. It's not, you know, your typical HD or ML or, you know, extreme, something completely out of this world. Is that your most common selling zirconia no ht is the best selling zirconia followed by the extreme i would say the ht because of its very competitive price point mm -hmm. 89.99 for a 12 millimeter which is really good price you know 90 bucks and of course we do have promotions you know here and there so the price does get a little bit lower during those promotional times extreme is next and then you know multi-layer and stardust are pretty much tied in third place yeah are you seeing an increase in the use of multi-layer because I know that a lot of labs still don't use it. Um, we've seen an increase in Extreme. I think Extreme was an extremely successful launch. That's funny because I said the word twice. <laughs> but it was very popular. You know, you've got Y4 content throughout the whole zirconia. And you get this really beautiful aesthetic product. But you still get that strength. So I tell customers, I'm like, if you use it for molars, you know, you're wasting your money. Don't because this product is meant for anteriors and use it for, you know, number six through 11 or even go back one, go from five to 12. This is a great product for that anterior region. Yeah. The pictures I've seen of it, they're beautiful. Thank you. I don't know how much aftercare I see on it, but if it's even close to just coming out of the mill, that's a really nice zirconia. Just speaking to my ceramist, you know, when we first started testing the product out and they got it and they said, you know, of course we had a little minor tweaks in the beginning, like, oh, the shade's a little bit too light or too dark. So we did those. They got it back. And the first time I remember one of my head ceramists saw it, like the department manager, he said, Sato, this is out of this world. This is a really nice zirconia. But he goes, are you sure it's as tough as it is? And of course, we sent it to the lab. We got the numbers. And I said, of course, you know, try it out. So he tries to grind on it. And he said, man, this is strong. But how is it? It looks almost like porcelain. You know, he couldn't believe it. Yeah. You know, if you stack porcelain for 30 years of your life, and you see something like this that looks like what you did before and you're like, okay, this is going to be weak, you know, mm -hmm. it's going to shatter or it's going to it's going to cause fracture lines, but it didn't, it, it really held up to a standard. Yeah. You ever want to know how strong zirconia is? Just start grinding. Yeah. It. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. How many people do you have staining and glazing? Is it a pretty big operation over there? Um, no, I mean, they do pump out a lot of work. I do have five techs that are full-time staining glazers. Wow. That's still a lot. Yeah. And they're all great. They've been with us from day one of the company. So it's not like we added new people or we had to let go. No, uh, they're still the same five people. So they're very happy. And I'm, of course, you know, me and my brother are so happy as well to have them. So what do you and your brother do all day? I mean, do you guys actually are in there running mills? You stain and glaze because that's what you've done in the past? Definitely. We get our hands dirty. My brother is head of operations, so he's in charge of the milling center completely. Yeah. He's there with the guys. You know, if there's something wrong, he'll troubleshoot it. He's with them the whole time. I'm more in the scan and design department, which is our the big main office i call it the bullpen mm -hmm. i'm with the order processors and the shipping people so i'm more in the office work i still do all of the marketing for the company so it's my job to get all the new ads out and everything on time and make sure you know the company as a whole we're working together i don't like to have private offices even though i mean we do have a private office for me and my brother sure we, I, i'm still every day you know eight hours ten hours i'm with the team I want to listen to everything. I want to see what's going on. I want to make sure customers are happy. And of course, if my techs or my guys, they have questions or the girls, 
they come ask me right away and you know we'll solve it together it's just teamwork all the way around in every department we got that's great sounds like you have a nice culture there yeah very cool you definitely have to be a team player you know there's no job here that you can do alone at the end of the day that one crown i don't care if it's you know one unit it's being pass through like multiple texts to get finished, right? Because everyone has their little job that they got to do on it. Yeah. I think it's important that people realize that you are American milling center with all the employees there in the facility because outsourcing kind of gets a bad word these days and it's not always outsourcing. It's a partnership. That's exactly what it is. You know, outsourcing got, when somebody says that you immediately think offshore, you know, yeah, overseas. No, it doesn't have to mean that. So maybe we should change the word of local uh, outsourcing to insourcing, you know? Absolutely. But insourcing can mean something else. So it can mean, you know, we're coming from overseas to us, which some overseas labs do send to us. No kidding. Yeah. This is something crazy. Uh, I don't even know if I can talk about it, but couple of overseas labs that take work from the U.S., they design their crowns and then they send it to us, the design files, and then we mill it. We manufacture it in the USA and then we mail it to their customers in the USA. <laughs> Seems kind of backwards, but okay. <laughs> as long as we can bring work back in the USA, I'm okay with it. Yeah. Interesting. Do these people know it's coming from you? You know, it's with their labels, but... Their company assures them or their outsource partner assures them that their work is being made in the USA. And it is, you know? Yeah. And huh. their customers are happy. You know, it goes with their shipping label on it and it goes right back to Ohio, to Georgia, to wherever. And it goes from California. Yeah. And you guys are there employing technicians, just strengthening our industry. So great stuff. Exactly. Yeah. Awesome. Well, back in March, we were supposed to have a shindig at the DLAT meeting. We were supposed to have a Top Golf kickoff event that, of course, got canceled due to COVID. And I know that DLAT meeting's back on for October. Are we still planning on doing the Top Golf? You know, I was looking forward to it so much back in March. I know. I was counting down the days because I'm like, I can't wait. It's going to be so much fun. So are we back on October? Of course we're back on for October. I'm going to start counting down the days again. Yeah, that's going to be a great show and a much needed one after this long summer break of nothing. <laughs> it was such a boring uh, two months, I can tell you that. Yes, it was pretty rough for everybody, but it, it sounds like you're back at it. Labs are back at it. Our industry is going to be okay. Yes, we're going to bounce back, I think, very hard, very strong. It's going to be amazing. Yeah. Well, I appreciate your time. Is there anything else you want to mention to our listeners about Alien Milling? I think we covered a lot. The best thing I can say is if you want to stay up to date with us, definitely, I would say, subscribe to our newsletters. Not just for Free Crown Friday, which is, you know, you'll get that for sure. But you'll also stay up to the minute on the latest news. So we're going to have lots of news coming out in July. And, of course, at the end of this month as well with the Verseo printer with VHF launch, with the new shades and materials. There's always something new going on here. And if you want to stay up to the minute with us, please subscribe. We don't litter your mailbox. We keep it classy. We keep it maybe once or twice a week maximum. And you guys are also, you're all over Facebook and all the other social medias, Instagram, Twitter. You know, we have to keep your bases covered, right? Yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, you guys are out there and it's good stuff. And we appreciate all that you have done for our industry. Thank you, Elvis. Thank you so much for having me. And uh, tell Barb I said thank you as well. Absolutely. I appreciate it, sir. We'll talk to you soon. Have a great day. Thanks. Bye-bye. So a big thanks to Saro and Rafi. I'm really kind of bummed. Great interview, Elvis. Too bad I missed it. Thank you guys for coming on the podcast and telling us more about Alien Milling. So it's now July, so they should be offering that fascinating printed temporary crown with Bago right now. It's only a matter of time before we are printing our final restorations, and I'll bet you Alien Milling will be one of the first. Be sure to check out their website at alienmilling.com and sign up for their email so you can, too, get a free crown every Friday. During this whole comeback from COVID, we actually started to send a few designs to Alien Milling. As many labs experienced when we opened back up, that work came back real quick. I mean, we've been yeah. talking about it for weeks, and yep. we didn't have all the technicians back yet. So we sent a couple designs for them to help us out get through some bottlenecking we had going on. 
we've sent to other design centers in the past, never happy with the quality, never happy with the consistency. Mm -hmm. And I tell you, Alien Milling did it well. They did a nice job. And I think a lot of it has to do with the fact that they only have six technicians all in one place. Some of these other design centers are, you know, all over the world. Yep. And not only that, they came back better because the designers they have at their center get to see their work after it's milled. And I think it helps with them become better designers. Sweet. Yeah. As Saro says, they're a little bit more expensive than the other design centers. And I'll agree to that. But it was totally worth it just to know that what you get back can almost go directly in the mill. I recommend them to everybody. Awesome. That's good. Yeah. Tried and true, Elvis doll. If I said it, you know it. (laughs) Okay. So the good folks at Alien Milling, because what they love to do is promotional codes, they are offering a special to the listeners of Voices from the Bench. Nice. Enter the code VOICES, and that's V-O-I-C-E-S, during checkout, and they will send you a free extreme Full Contour Zirconia Crown. Nice. This is their top-selling zirconia in retails for about $44. That's a deal. It is. Here's the catch. Only one per customer, and the offer is only good for Monday, the day this episode's released, on July 6th and Tuesday, July 7th. So move it, everybody. Yeah, so only our listeners that listen early in the week get this deal. Good, good. Everyone that listens to us later in the week, I'm sorry, but you just missed out. But just like everything else in our industry, you got to act fast. Heck yeah. So we appreciate the offer, Alien Milling. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. It's very cool. Appreciate it. All right, everybody. That's all we got. Have a good one. We'll talk to you next week. Bye. Too much coffee today. (laughs) 